Hello everybody, how are you? Hope you're well. This is a Tamiya Midnight Pumpkin. Specifically, it's actually Rachel's Tamiya Midnight Pumpkin. Rachel owns four RC models. She's got this, she has a Colt Thunder short course truck, Mtronics sort of thing. Uh, she has a Team C Jekyll, which is essentially a Mad Rat. And she has that awful John Wontanabe, Wontanabe Tamiya Hornet, you know, the one that's designed by a famous fashion designer. But it looks like a seven-year-old girl took all her favourite colours, loaded it into a paintball gun and went da 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 There you are. It's just, it's horrific. So anyway, we're selling that one. But this is actually her favourite. Uh, but you wouldn't know by looking at it because it's been woefully neglected. Or rather woefully maintained. It's been horrifically neglected. Um, you know, but right now it's absolutely filthy. But uh, I've, I've already given it a quick clean. But I found it up in her dad's loft. Um, I was looking for it because I wanted to give it a service. Speaking of Rachel, Rachel and I are moving in together at some point soon, so I'll be moving from here uh, in the next few months or so. Um, these women, they always want things really fast, don't they? They, only, they always like to progress really fast. It's, it's way too quick for my taste. I mean, we've only been together eight years. What? <laughs> but anyway, um, yes, so I need to give this a service, basically. I thought I'd give it a, a service to see if it's still working. No, it's not. No, it's not still working. Um, it doesn't look too bad now. I mean, obviously it looks filthy, but, it, you know, it's all one piece. It doesn't look broken or anything. So maybe you're wondering how bad can it be? Well, before we get into that, let's just uh, have a look under the body body shell here and we'll see uh, what's up with this car. But unfortunately, the clips are all corroded. So it's not so easy. And I've cut my nails, so it's not so easy to get these clips out. <sighs> ah! Ow! Ow! Right, I'm definitely putting better clips on this thing. Jeez. Right. Okay. Um, ah, so you can see, first of all, it's had some use. It's, it's not too bad, though. There's no cracks or breaks or anything. Scrapes, yes. You can see there, and the, the chrome's been worn away and things. Not too bad. These are loose, but you can sort that. Not too bad. It's just a bit dirty. Right, the model itself, uh, I, when I built this for her several years ago, I, I obviously completely forgot about this, but looking at it again, it brings it back. Um, fitted several upgrades to it. It has the you know, homemade strengthening bar, a brace across the shock mounts, because that all flexes in. It's got the five shock mods, look, for the shock mod in there. All filled shocks all round, unlike the standard plastic pogo sticks. Um, it's got the wheelie bar mod, see that, they've got the brace and the wheelie bar, so it spreads, spreads the load between there and there to stop the gearbox casing splitting when it wheelies and smacks it. Um, it's got full bearing kit, so that's good. Um, what else is, it looks like that's about it. Um, running a, let's see, uh, Absima servo, so that must have come out of another model. Absima, what Absimas have we bought? None? Where the heck did that come from? But anyway, it's got an Absima servo. Um, it's running a Nicometer Hydride. I'm going to have to get this thing running on LiPo. It runs so much better on a LiPo. Um, but I'll probably need to buy another LiPo because uh, I have a selection of two cell LiPos, hard cases, but only one is Nicometer Hydride sized and can fit in older models such as the Tamiya's. Uh, you know, my TTO1. Eh, there's a little bit of space, I suppose, in that. But TLO1, you've got no chance. You've got to use a a Nicometer Hydride sized LiPo, same with the lunchbox. Um, so I've, if, if we're going to run these together, my lunchbox has got the LiPo, then I need to buy a second LiPo because my Overlanders don't fit in these. So that's cool. Um, Absima radio gear. What? Wait. I mean, I, I, not, I suppose that's not too far fetched because I, I like quite like these controllers, so I, I kind of do buy them. So that's not so far fetched, but anyway. Now it's got the standard Tamiya speed controller, TEU105BK. Now I'm going to do a little bit of research on that. I'm not sure if that's LiPo compatible or not, or if I need to get a buzzer. I do have a spare buzzer, it's not a problem. Um, Yukomo Pro Stock 2. You can see it, there's the motor in there. It's filthy. I mean, it's, it's absolutely filthy. Um, Pro Stock 2, Yukomo. 
Uh, yes, it's an upgrade over the standard Tamiya Silver can. It's much better than that. It is much better than that. But as far as 27 turn stock motors go, it's very average. I mean, if you compare the performance of this versus the Trinity P2K Pro that I have in my lunchbox, the P2K Pro would just leave it in the dust. It's, it's a far superior motor. But it's not too bad. I mean, these things go pretty well. You can pull these with a standard silver can, so it's fine. Uh, maybe give that a, a service. But anyway, so it's, it's not a bad spec, really. For a midnight pumpkin, it's okay, but um, I mean, you can probably see the state it's all in that. That can is utterly disgusting, and the whole gearbox casing is just just under a whole layer of dust, dust and dirt and hair. The bottom of the motor, where it mounts on the gearbox, is all corroded and rusty. Um, all the screws are corroded. Many of them are rusty. Um, the servo screws are are rusty. Talking about the servo, I don't know if it still works. I mean, I can move it just about sounds a bit gritty and horrible this will be a plastic internal geared servo i'm sure it will but the, the posts that all the gears sit on are all metal and the screws are metal um i think maybe the servo saver is a bit loose so you know if i tighten that up and the servo's still not playing ball then the servo's obviously gone the bottom of the shock mounts are all rusty the, obviously the, i talked about the body clips and they're horrible um i can't even turn it on to test it You've got the, where's the mount, where's the uh, switch, switches, where is it, there it is, it's under there, you probably can't see it, the switch is under there, and you've got the two bolts going through, the two bolts are, they're not even recognisable as bolts anymore, they're just big mounds of rust, I, I can't switch the switch, it's completely solid, it's, I could probably get a, you know, a big clamp or something and move it, but that kind of defeats a purpose, that switch is gone, it's completely corroded shut, or corroded open, corroded open so there's no power. So um, I'm just going to drill that out, drill, drill the two screws out, remove the switch. I'll probably cut the switch cable, solder that together so it doesn't have a switch. Assuming the speed controller still works. Um, put a Dean's plug on this, get the, get the uh, two cell lipo on it. Uh, yeah, the whole thing will need not only a clean but probably rebuilt. Um, just to take all the, not all the screws maybe, but take a bunch of screws off, clean them up. Maybe uh, treat them with Q-Rust. Some of them are okay, but some of them are nasty. Um, the gearbox feels fine, but... Might as well take it apart and have a look. See what it's, see what it's like inside. Give it, a, give it a new coat of grease or whatever. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. I don't think I can get it, coax any life out of it at all. I can't switch it on. I, I personally have got no batteries that have uh, Tamiya plugs anyway. This has not been charged for six years or something. It's going to be completely dead. This thing hasn't been used for about six years. Um, so I don't know what the status is of, of it. But I'm going to have a little project of uh, sort of bringing this back to its former glory, giving it a clean up, giving it a service. Talking about service, look at these shocks. It's fine. The back ones sort of work a little bit, but I think it's just because there's so many of them, you're going to get rebound. Um, yeah, this is a very neglected RC car. And my hands are filthy now. But we'll get it running. We'll get it running and we'll get it done and it'll be nice and it'll be fun and she'll enjoy it, I'm sure. Or she'll stick it in the loft and never see it again. At least when we live together... Um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a man cave room and all the RC stuff will be in there, including this. So at least I'll be able to keep tabs on it. So rather than I think one of the reasons it was up in the loft in her dad's house was probably a little bit damp. But not just a little bit damp. When it was last used, it was on a sort of gritty, gravelly surface, and it was never cleaned afterwards. So you've got this grit sitting on it, and then I think the loft is damp, and that's probably where you've got all this horrible rust, like corrosion. But it is what it is. It's very common. Very common. For, uh, I mean, obviously, it's not so much for someone like me or say, maybe, maybe someone like you who are into the hobby. But how many times have you seen people digging out old Tamiya's or old Kyosho's or whatever from their childhood? Oh, there's my childhood toy. I've not seen it for 10 years or 20 years or whatever. And then you pull it out and it's in a cardboard box in the loft. And the cardboard box is mouse-eaten. It's covered in fluff. And you've got an old, corroded, plastic, junky-looking RC car that's completely seized up. And they go, oh, that goes in the bin then. It's completely broken. It's very common, but we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. We're gonna just get it sorted. Yes, we are, and I'm gonna clean all the cobwebs off it. It'll be fine. 
Tune in later on and we'll get some progress with it. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.